making things go back to front can be really fun. Sometimes we call that a reversal. Like when we go from the picture being this way round to this way round. When things are the other way round to the way you expect, we call it a reversal. Here's Rebecca doing our reading the other week. Should we make her go the other way around too? Oh, <laughs> that's made me feel kind of dizzy. Oh. Some reversals are bad, but some are really good. And we're going to look at the amazing reversal that Christmas brings as we look at Mary's song today. So let's look at Mary's song together now. So come back with me into the true Christmas story in the Bible. We're in Luke's Gospel. God has told Mary that she is going to have a son called Jesus. The Holy Spirit overshadows Mary and she becomes pregnant with the Son of God. Mary accepts this and she goes to see a family member, possibly her cousin, Elizabeth, who is also pregnant with John the Baptist. And this is how Mary celebrates. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. About this pretty cool reversal. Normally, my forehead uh, sticks out more than my cheeks do. But here, as you can see with this rather cool uh, chipmunk impression, it makes my cheeks bigger. And I love this super crazy effect. You know, I'm not sure that Mim would be too keen if I went around looking like that all the time. But some reversals, as I've said, are really good. And we're going to look at these great reversals now in the story we had read for us. And whenever you see an R appear on the screen like this, I want you to shout reversal. Do you think you can do that? Let's have a practice. No, no, I don't think that was loud enough. That was like a little mouse. Let's have another go. Wow, I almost heard that at my house. Well, remember to do that. We want it as loud as this. And I know that some of you have very loud voices. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. That is a reversal. Humble state of his servant? God didn't choose someone who was powerful to bring Jesus into the world. He chose a humble young girl, someone who wasn't powerful or proud. That's not the kind of person lots of people would have chosen. He would have chosen someone that everyone looked up to. That's a reversal. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. All generations, all the people that came after Mary would remember how blessed she was by God? Surely she'd be forgotten as an unimportant person. No. God says that she will be remembered. She knows that she will be remembered because she got to carry God's Son, the Lord Jesus, 
and to help bring him into the world. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. God has brought down rulers from their thrones. He brought down the people that stood against his, his own people, Israel, in the Old Testament. And he didn't choose those with thrones and palaces to bring Jesus into the world. And when Jesus came, he didn't come just for rich and powerful people. Actually, he came for lots of ordinary people like us and for the poor. But has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things. When people are hungry and empty, feeling empty and in need of God, he will come and fill them. He will take an empty situation and flip it over and make them full. Mary says that God has filled the hungry with good things. But has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Did you spot them all? Were you nice and loud with your shouting? I bet I'll be hearing that you were from your parents. In the gospel, we have so many amazing reversals. There's no other story like it in the world. We value strength in the world and clever people and beautiful people. And although those things can be good gifts from God, it's good if we have a good mind and strong bodies. Actually, often we feel weak and God values the weak. He doesn't look to the strong, but he comes for weak people like us. And maybe you feel weak. You know that there's things that you find hard. You know that you sin and do wrong things. Well, God is offering himself in Jesus to you. And even when you feel empty and hungry inside, I don't just mean when you haven't had your tea, but when you feel sad and empty, God's able to fill you up. He promises that he will do that. And if you're in a situation that you think this is a really difficult, bad situation, God could never help me. Well, remember that God is the God of reversals. He turns things around all the time. That is what the gospel is about. Mary knew that she had a God who could change anything around for good because of his great love. And that was seen most of all by him sending Jesus to the world to rescue all those who would put their trust in him. Mary knows what she should do because of this. She says, my soul glorifies the Lord. My soul rejoices in God, my saviour. We should rejoice and give thanks to God, singing to him and living our whole lives for him. What an amazing God who in the gospel of Jesus turns everything around for good. Thanks so much for the talk, Sai. Gosh, it's wonderful news to hear about all the reversals that are at the heart of Christmas. These things should cause us to rejoice, just like Mary. Now, I've had an idea about how to help us rejoice. Remember the story and remember the problem that I was having earlier with the Christmas decorations? Well, we're going to make some Christmas decorations. Here are some of the things you're going to need for this Christmassy craft. A pencil? Some colour, some Christmassy coloured pens, tape, some string, some scissors, a piece of paper, and something round to draw around. This is the first step. You get your round object, make sure it's nice and big so it stands out from all of the other decorations on the tree, and draw around it to get a nice circular shape can be a bit difficult, but just be patient. And there you go. There's our circle. With that done, 
we just draw a little tab on the top here. That'll be used for later, but we need to remember to put it there. It's always important when you're trying to put a lot of text into a small space that you plan out where it's going to go. So what I'm going to do now is take a pencil and just write out all of the words I want to put in there and make sure they all fit first. I'm using a pencil because then it's nice faint lines that can be easily rubbed out later. I'm going for the first couple of verses in Mary's song, verses number 46 and 47. My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my saviour. Make sure you use your best handwriting and make it all big and clear. It may even be handy to have an open Bible near you so you can know that you've got all the spellings correct. With that all done, we can start writing in all of the words. A good trick for making things really clear is to go over the capital letters in a bigger pen than the other letters, so that the capital letters really stand out. Then, using a smaller pen, we can go through the rest of the letters. Be careful to write right over the pencil, otherwise you might have to rub it out later. If you want to make things really stand out, you can add all sorts of extra things to it. Personally, I'm going to put some nice underlining under all of the words to make them nice and bold and add a nice Christmassy contrast with this lovely red pen. Now we are going to cut out the shape that we've drawn, but be careful because scissors can be dangerous if they've used wrong. If you're feeling a little uncertain, or if you're just a little bit on the young side, be sure to get your parents to do this for you. Be sure to remember to not cut through the tab that we made at the start. There we go. And now we're nearly finished. We just need to put the string on it. Firstly, we'll flip it over and we'll get a length of string so that we can hook it onto the tree wherever we like. About this long should do, about as wide as the ornament is. Now that we've got this length of string, we also need to fold over this tab here. What we're going to do is we're going to put the string there, fold the tab down, and then tape it. Get a little bit of tape, find the end, get some off, and fold that down over the string. Put the tape there so it's nice and secure. There we go, it can lift up nicely from the edge. And lastly, we're going to tie a knot in it. Again, it's another fiddly part, so if you need a bit of help, don't be afraid to go ask someone. There we go. Wrapped it over itself a couple times and then pulling it tight. Like that. Trim off the excess. And there we have it, a lovely ornament that we can put on our tree, and whenever we look at it, remember the story that we've just heard. Well, we're coming to the end of the episode, so let's have a quick think about what we've learnt today. We've learnt that Advent has been a time for songs of celebration right from the start, and we've seen that God should be praised for all of the brilliant reversals that he has done for us in Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? I'll finish us off in prayer. Lord, thank you for Advent and for all of the good things it brings, especially the reminder of the coming of your Son to save us. Help us to be reminded every day to sing and give praise to you for the wonderful things that you've done. Amen. See you all next time, and I hope you have a good week until then. Bye!